Hello and welcome to the lecture entitled Shader Graphs and Game Engines, which was originally aired on the 18th of March this year, but because of some technical glitches uh, I didn't succeed with the actual recording. So I am now uh, re-recording this lecture in a slightly different form, uh, somewhat even better because uh, I am now working on my own computer unlike on, the, on that day of our only, by the way, the only remote session in this module this um, this term uh, so i will uh, um, show some examples directly so some examples of, of the topics discussed directly in uh, unity uh, so let me switch to to the screen uh, in uh, the module this is a part of level 3 advanced 3d topics and this is unit 302 shader graphs and game engines uh, which uh, contains a lot of additional material which i recommend you to uh, browse through and um, actually these uh, two short video tutorials are the main part of this of this session i will give you today just a quick introduction uh, about what shaders are in unity but the main thing about how to create shader graphs is uh, in these two recordings uh, uh, below okay shader graphs uh, short tutorial and rendering water i will um, comment on them a little bit uh, more uh, later on uh, for now let's uh, in um, concentrate on the lecture slides uh, these are entitled introduction to shaders in unity and uh, here we go uh, so, first of all, what are shaders in Unity? Uh, it shouldn't be any kind of surprise that shaders are actually used in Unity quite uh, intensively, because shaders are everywhere, wherever you have any kind of uh, 3D graphics uh, uh, rendering. Um, and now, in Unity, shader define how shading or rendering should look like, and they are attached, typically attached to materials. Uh, you can uh, see an example here in an inspector showing properties of a material, and uh, in the top uh, you will have, uh, you, you can see the name of the shader attached to this particular uh, material. Uh, this uh, screenshot has been taken a few years ago, but don't worry, I will work on live Unity in a few minutes. So, shaders are attached to materials, materials are then attached to game objects. Uh, the shader defines, uh, the, first of all, the method, how a given surface should be rendered. And a shader also defines what kind of properties, whether these are textured properties or color properties or simple number properties, what is needed to exactly define how the, uh, the, the uh, surface would look like. Okay, But shader doesn't define exactly what texture it is, it just says tells uh, um, that a texture is needed, a color specification is needed, so that's a method how to render a surface. And then material attaches a shader, so material will use the method of rendering defined by the shader, but additionally the material will be the place where you specify which actual texture should be used, which actual colors, which actual num numeric values or anything like that. An example of the situation is here. Uh, here we have two cars. Actually these cars have been um, uh, rendered using a custom shader mm, called uh, car paint okay so we have a custom uh, shader car paint or, or car body shader it's uh, named here car body uh, shader never mind all right so uh, this is the shader okay uh, car body shader the car body shader is attached by two different materials blue car material which you can see on the blue car and the red car material, which you can see on the red car. Both materials share the same method of displaying a car paint or car body, a car body surface, 
and, uh, and now uh, the blue car material additionally attaches a car texture uh, which is responsible for all these uh, fine details on the surface of the car and also text uh, takes a, a blue color texture uh, which is as you can see um, uh, this this is a very specific uh, specific uh, texture which will take a, a profile including two different colors like this uh, uh, greenish and bluish uh, uh, shade for the blue car material but red and car and and, and uh, orange or yellowish okay uh, for the red car material all right so these two materials share the same shader share the same uh, car texture actually because why not uh, but they differ with the definition of the color texture which is uh, blue green here and red orange here and uh, this is how you can make two different variants of um, um, car body which differ with the color in this way all right so this explains uh, this hierarchy shader is attached to materials materials are attached to the uh, game objects uh, we also have another material here a wheel material which will in this case use a simple metal shader some kind of a different shader which takes different parameters it also can takes the car texture because why not uh, but it doesn't have the color texture like uh, the uh, car body shader had um, all right looking at this broader uh, shaders in unity uh, and you have to remember that uh, wherever you use any kind of a material it will have a shader attached to this material um, we have uh, two broad categories of uh, uh, shaders built-in shaders and custom shaders uh, we'll first concentrate on a few actually just one specific built-in shader which is called standard shader which was new from unity which was basically introduced uh, uh, in, in unity 5 it's difficult to say it was new it is new because uh, unity 5 is the year 2015 okay um there are also some other standard um, shaders and sorry for using this word new uh, they are seven years n um, old now so so they are not so new uh, but they are let's say a uh, current this is still the up-to-date technology in terms of in terms of built-in shaders in unity there are also special shaders uh, quite important is the mobile shader which is specifically um, optimized for use on mobile application mobile games and more than 80 legacy shaders that uh, we shouldn't actually be using anymore i'm not entirely even sure if the uh, uh, latest versions of unity still keep these uh, legacy shaders so forget about them uh, another big category of shaders are sh custom shaders used for anything not supported by the standard shaders uh, and you can say professional projects nearly always we will use some of the custom shaders so in this uh, in this lecture i will first uh, spend some time on dis discussing the standard shader uh, because uh, first of all it's quite po powerful it's uh, uh, not always known uh, in terms of uh, all its uh, uh, features um, people just use them as default thing in default uh, material not entirely understanding what uh, real power of this shader is and uh, most importantly standard shaders are based on uh, something that is called physically based shading uh, which is a, a kind of a new topic to to our module perhaps introduced a bit uh, late uh, but this is this is quite quite a nice quite a funny thing quite a powerful thing as well um, so um, the, the other part of this uh, lecture not so much covered in uh, this particular recording but I showed you um, um, the materials available in uh, uh, canvas so shader graphs which are the main part of this uh, um, teaching and learning unit 
of shader graphs are exactly what we call custom shaders. All right, but go back to, to the standard shader. Uh, introduced, as I mentioned, in Unity 5, mm, the year 2015, uh, but they are still up to date. Uh, this image here is um, uh, quite an old one because it was um, introduced uh, together with Unity 5, and this was the image that uh, Unity used to for, for marketing of the new, then new product, uh, the physically based uh, standard shader. Uh, what's important about this scene, all the scenery that you can see in this uh, picture are created specifically and only exclusively using the standard shader, so one shader for everything uh, here. Okay, but I mentioned physically based shading. What, uh, what, uh, what, what, what is that? What, uh, uh, what is physically, sorry, what is physically based uh, shading? Um, first of all, it's current trend in rendering, okay? Not very new, but it's current, okay? And it is only possible thanks to um, reasonably recent development in graphics uh, hardware. Uh, this is nothing uh, connected to the latest RTX and VDR series of cards that would provide uh, ray tracing and so on. Uh, this is something that you can easily get in uh, a typical GTX uh, a card, but rather and uh, in, uh, you know the top, the newer ones than the older ones. And uh, the goal of uh, PBS uh, physically based shading is to get a better simulation of physically realistic interaction between the material and light. Uh, here you have two, uh, no, sorry, one formal definition. Physically based shading is user friendly way of achieving a consistent, plausible look under different lighting conditions. It models how light behaves in reality without using multiple ad hoc models that may or may not work. Uh, the point is that uh, uh, 3D rendering that we used throughout this module until now. Uh, in many cases are kind of cheating, okay? We have some uh, models. If you want to get uh, shadows, you use uh, shadow maps. If you need uh, um, um, reflections, you use environment maps, okay? Uh, but uh, whether it is uh, physically reliant or physically realistic or not, it quite often, too often, depends on um, how you use these, uh, these, uh, these models, how you connect them, how you make them interworking, working between them, all right? Um, and uh, PBS is an attempt to put everything in under control in a one consistent model. A very good introductory paper uh, entitled Basic Theory of Physically Based Rendering uh, is linked here and it's also linked uh, from Canvas. Uh, if you are in more interested in this topic, I really recommend reading this, uh, this paper. All right, uh, but what it means, consistent, physically based, um, uh, here are just a few principles of physically based shading and the first of these principles is the principle of energy conservation. Energy conservation is one of the fundamental laws of physics and basically it says that in a um, isolated system, okay, um, the energy, the total amount of energy will be maintained at the uh, constant level. So energy cannot be lost, okay, can be it can be uh, converted into other forms of, of energy, but cannot be just destroyed. You cannot destroy energy, and energy also cannot be uh, cannot be created from nothing. Okay, something that we know particularly now very 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 uh, well. Um, of course, we are not uh, not going to mention here uh, relativistic uh, uh, theory, Einstein stuff, E equals mc squared. Um, basically, in, 
it it also does not uh, break energy conservation principle it just tells that uh, the matter is a form of energy as well but forget about this for, for now what's important for us is uh, something like this okay uh, this is a marble a marble which uh, has a um, i have five different images here by the way they are taken from the paper I uh, recommended in the previous slide, uh, there are five marbles here with increasing reflectivity. Okay, so the first one is totally matte; it's it's not reflective at all, and the last one has these um, uh, very strong uh, specular uh, spots, uh, which actually contain some kind of a, a blurred image here. So this is real uh, reflectivity, not just specular light. Um, and uh, with uh, constant albedo, so the constant underlying color, uh, you can see that uh, the more reflective uh, the marble is, the darker it looks. Okay, and this is this energy conservation because uh, the color of the of any surface is connected to the light energy that is radiated from this from this uh, surface. So basically. Uh, when you lit, when, when you put light on a surface, um, the surface will uh, acquire the light energy, and then it will radiate it back. Uh, but according to the energy conservation, uh, the radiated energy, so what you can see, cannot increase what was previously previously uh, acquired by the surface. Uh, so here the assumption is that um, uh, the light is constant. Okay but uh, the rightmost marble uses a lot of this energy to produce uh, these specular lines, specular spots, okay? So uh, the larger and whiter these spots are, uh, the more energy they take, and therefore uh, there is a smaller amount, lower amount of energy left to uh, provide the diffuse color, so everything else apart from these specular spots, okay? So with increasing reflectivity, we get darker and darker look of the of, of the stuff. And if you think about it, if you do some observations of a, a real world around you, you will notice that uh, really shiny objects are dark. Okay, are dark, or if they are completely one hundred percent reflective, like a a, um, a mirror. Um, a mirror doesn't have color at all, okay? And you know why it doesn't have a color? Because uh, the mirror is ideally pitch black in terms of its uh, diffuse color. All the color uh, uh, the mirror emits is the reflection and no diffuse. So in terms of diffuse, a mirror, it doesn't look like this, but the mirror is really, really black, okay? And uh, uh, darker objects uh, like my phone tend to be shiny, uh, but if you try to create uh, reflections on a surface that is very bright, and I've seen some attempts of doing this in the class because uh, without this energy conservation principle, uh, my students quite often uh, don't notice, don't understand that if they create a a um, nice surface with intensive uh, with intensive um, specular light uh, they shouldn't combine it with a bright diffuse light if you try uh, such a surface will look uh, bad we will we, we look wrong we will we, we look un unrealistic okay um, all right how to make a um, specular spot a little bit uh, physically uh, based using a, a simple trick uh, if you have a, a typical statement in your shader uh, which uh, calculates uh, the uh, specular light color color from uh, uh, material specular material specular specular light and the power of uh, uh, r.v if you don't remember exactly what r.v is go back to the point light uh, uh, recipe 
uh, it's just a physical calculation of uh, uh, that product between uh, between two vectors of the angle between two vectors and shininess is uh, the amount of shininess on the surface right if you want to keep it a little bit more physically based um, uh, you, you, you need to multiply this color by a value called norm and this norm will depend on the shininess and can be found from this simple formula so this is a way to easily add a little bit of physically based uh, look to your uh, scenes that include shininess that include shiny surfaces uh, the second big big really big really important and really quite attractive uh, principle of physically based shading is um, uh, shading uh, sorry uh, metal shading or rendering metals and fresnel reflections uh, fresnel was a french optician and this is why we read this name fresnel as shouldn't be read it's not fresnel it's uh, his uh, his name was fresnel uh, what are fresnel uh, reflections uh, basically uh, it's uh, based all based uh, all this is based on the observation that reflectivity is uh, a function is based is dependent on the incidence uh, angle so in other words um, near the center of the object uh, so wherever the surface of the object is facing you okay uh, so the we 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 we, we say that um, uh, the incidence angle is low with low angle uh, the ref reflectivity will be uh, lower as well uh, regardless of the material every material has this uh, feature this property that at the center the re reflectivity will be slightly uh, lower uh, we have two different materials here rubber rubber that in uh, the center is nearly not reflective at all and chrome which is a uh, not a browser in this case but this is sorry sorry for the uh, noises outside uh, but this is a uh, metal okay so this metallic surface is uh, quite uh, quite quite reflective but anyway where you when you go from the center to the edge you can notice that uh, this reflectivity will rise and at the very edge nearly every object is reflective okay at 90 degrees of incidence everything uh, becomes uh, reflected reflective um, this is one of the most popular advanced uh, reflection types um, uh, so basically the take home message here is that reflectivity depends on the view angle surface facing you is less reflective uh, surface that is more glancing or at the edge of objects uh, it will uh, be more intensive in terms of uh, uh, reflections uh, it's uh, great if combined with specular light in blind form uh, lighting uh, model. Uh, this uh, diagram uh, repeated uh, again, and here is a, a picture showing this phenomenon. Uh, the, the the photo taken uh, uh, source in Wikipedia, which shows that if you look at the objects uh, at a very large large uh, angle uh, incidence angle um, nearly everything becomes uh, shiny okay so this is why a backlit scene like this uh, seems uh, quite quite shiny and uh, one more example of uh, Fresnel reflections uh, actually I can show a little bit more I have for you a, a project in uh, C++ something which you should be quite familiar with uh, this vase implements uh, Fresnel reflections so you can see that uh, uh, near the edge you can see quite clearly the uh, reflection of the environment but in front of you it's uh, kind of darker and not so reflective so this is a uh, Fresnel uh, 
kind of uh, reflection. I think it looks quite cool, actually, doesn't it? Uh, how is this um, obtained in uh, terms of uh, fragment shader code? Um, this is a typical instruction for combining um, uh, combining reflective uh, reflective uh, um, color and uh, um, or, or, or channel of, of reflections. Okay, full re full reflections taken from a cube map and a uh, diffuse texture using reflection power. If you don't remember exactly how it worked. I would send you again to the uh, recipe about uh, cube maps and in environment maps. Uh, but here is the new aspect of this. Uh, this is the Fresnel, Fresnel uh, coefficient. And this Fresnel coefficient is calculated here in the vertex shader, exactly here. Um, it depends on the uh, dot product between position and normal. Uh, which is clamped uh, between 0 and 1, uh, but it's also um, powered, so so the, the real value of this Fresnel coefficient is uh, the dot product to the power of falloff. Falloff is a known, widely known, uh, widely used uh, parameter which uh, uh, precises, informs how much of the central area here, how, uh, how how fast this uh, Fresnel uh, effect uh, um, is created, all right? So in other words, uh, how wide is uh, this edge reflectivity zone? Uh, okay, enough about, uh, about Fresnel reflections. Um, uh, these are, uh, by the way, my favorite type of, uh, of uh, reflection. So I could talk about them for longer, but let's go to the next uh, aspect of this uh, um, physically based uh, uh, principles, and this is microsurface. Uh, microsurface is in um, inspector of the standard uh, standard shader based material uh, called smoothness, and uh, basically uh, uh, what it is. Um, with a lot of smoothness, um, the microsurface of of the of the uh, of, of of any object is uh, like flat. Okay, microsurface is about uh, microscopic irregularities in the profile of the surface of the of the object. So if you have these irregularities. Uh, then the the image becomes uh, less and less uh, clear in terms of of uh, reflections. Um, this means that uh, we have arrived to uh, the reflections, reflections with standard shader. Uh, quite interestingly, reflections like this one here, a beautiful reflection, um, are a standard part of a, a standard uh, shader. Um, so. Standard shader material has uh, contains these two uh, properties. One is called metallic, the other is called smoothness. Metallic uh, uh, is um, um, deciding whether the surface is uh, matte, like like wood or plastic or anything like this, or shiny, shiny like a metal. Okay. Uh, but smoothness will uh, also additionally control how clear or how fuzzy the, the, the final image uh, would be there. Um, additionally, what you need for creating a reflection with standard shader is some so-called so reflection probe, uh, which I will uh, explain using an actual, actual uh, project in Unity. This is a very simple scene which contains um, a sphere, another sphere, and two cubes. Uh, I have created some standard uh, materials, so let's make uh, this cube uh, red, this green, and this um, sphere will be will be blue. Uh, what I wanted to do, I wanted to uh, make this uh, central sphere um, reflective, okay, metallic, shiny. 
for this purpose, uh, I will create a new material. Uh, create a new material. And I will add wh whatever, mat. Okay? Mat? No, it's not a big, uh, not a good name. Uh, reflective. Okay. Um, as you can see in the inspector, uh, this material is by default based on the standard shader. Uh, we could we could change this to a um, long list of other shaders. By the way, I can see that I have all those legacy shaders as well. Uh, but I wanted to use the standard shader, so uh, let's be it. Uh, I will keep the albedo as as white uh, when we make it totally um, reflective, uh, this albedo will automatically be changed from white to black, uh, but not here, okay? We still use um, a white color as the basis for this albedo. Um, if you ask yourself what albedo is, that's what makes the red material red, okay? But let's keep this this reflective material uh, white. Oh, I nearly forgotten. Let's apply this material to my sphere. Nothing in particular changed, but uh, um, let's make it uh, more metallic. Okay, we, we start to see some kind of, of, a, uh, of a reflection here. Now, smoothness. This is totally smooth, this is totally not smooth, all right? So, um, the image becomes blurred with low uh, smoothness and quite clear with the high smoothness. Uh, let's have a look in the game mode. Mm, believe me that this is, this is an object, a uh, sphere, which reflects now what? It reflects just the skybox, because none of the objects around are really reflected. Reflected. So, uh, what I need to do is to... Mm. Sorry, I, I had something, uh, s some uh, problem here. Uh, so, I have to select our uh, sphere and add a new component, which is called a reflection reflection probe. Reflection probe. It uh, jumped from um, nice reflective to black, so for the start it's even, even worse. Uh, but the reason for that is that um, this reflection probe is of the type baked. I am not going to, to demonstrate baked reflection probes, I am going to demonstrate real-time reflection probes. And the situation improved at once, uh, the immediately, alright? So now we have a nice view, uh, reflected um, uh, view of the other three objects in my scene, so apparently everything's uh, working. Uh, or is it? I will apply this very simple, very simple uh, script to get some animation uh, in the in the scene. And you can notice that uh, with the default settings of real time reflection probe, animation is uh, not displayed in the reflection. This is because by uh, by default reflection probes create static uh, reflections, not dynamic reflections. So what I need to do, um, refresh, I need to change the refresh mode fr fr from on awake. This means that uh, uh, the six shots that are created, that are used to create the cube map, I hope you, you, you guessed so far that the reflection probe are just a unity name for the cube map, okay? So this cube map is created only once when the application is starting but I can change it to every frame and have a look now. Okay, now it's dynamic. All 
light. What if I would like to apply the same uh, reflection thing to another object? Uh, well, I have it. I have it. But you can see uh, some strange uh, things. First of all, both reflections look exactly the same. All right. Also, another interesting aspect is uh, this black spot here is the reflection of the other surface of the other object of, of the other sphere okay uh, it's black because we don't yet have installed something that is called uh, oh i've just forgotten how it is called but i will try to to, to tell you a little bit later this is um interreflectivity all right so uh, basically uh, without without this a reflective object in the reflection will be displayed as black not as a, a reflective one uh, but quite interestingly we also have the same reflection here on this side of the right hand side object why is that um, the answer is very simple if you look at this uh, cubic structure here this is so-called reflection probe zone and you can see that uh, my second uh, sphere is just at the end, edge of the zone. This means that both objects uh, actually share the same zone, the same uh, reflection probe. Um, what, uh, what we can do? First of all, I could add reflection probe for the second one. Okay, and you can see some amazing thing. Uh, we already can see a little bit of reflection here, even though I haven't yet changed the uh, reflection probe in uh, uh, in this object. So change from make to real time, and from on the wake to every frame. And uh, quite funnily, I have a, a combination of two reflections. It will be even uh, more visible when I move this second sphere a little bit closer. All right. And uh, now we can see that uh, uh, both of them uh, have like uh, two reflections combined. And the reason for that is uh, that now I have two reflection zones, but they have two different, uh, sorry, refle reflection probes, and they have two different uh, uh, reflection zones. I could now click here to edit this zone and make it smaller, but make it small, making it smaller. I excluded this sphere from the second sphere uh, from the second sphere uh, zone and now it is crystal clear here so I will do the same with the first zone where is this thing that I should oh sorry I forgot to you have to click this icon to start editing mode and uh, now everything is exactly as it should be um, so we have two crystal clear uh, reflections uh, basically why do you need uh, this kind of of uh, zoning of reflection probes the reason is simple uh, reflection probes are quite costly in terms of uh, uh, computation time uh, if you have a big number of uh, particularly small reflective objects in the scene and now if you imagine that every of the, the of these objects would have its own reflection probe um, the cost of this would rise very quickly and eventually your uh, frame rate would drop very significantly so what you can do you can create a reflective object with a large zone around it okay and you can put a lot of other objects uh, in the same zone so uh, basically a single reflection probe would be then uh, shared by a number of objects 
if these objects are not that clearly visible as these two spheres here, this may be quite a good solution because uh, in some details these reflections of course will not be perfect, okay? Uh, but if these are smaller objects uh, further away, perhaps these objects have uh, not that uh, smooth uh, image on the uh, on the uh, uh, on the uh, face. Okay, perhaps they are something like this. Okay, um, so uh, basically, these objects, uh, um, these imperfectness may be hardly visible or not, or not visible at all. And saving on the number of reflection probes across the scene is quite an important thing uh, to have. And uh, I will try to find one more thing here. In rendering lighting, I think that's, that should be here. Bounces. That's uh, th that's what we need. Environment reflections. Uh, bounces. Okay. If I change it to two, you can now see that uh, with with this bouncing bounces, um, the reflective objects in the reflection are still reflecting. Okay. Uh, each additional bounce, so bounce of two, bounce of three. Uh, what is bounce of two? If you look very closely, you could probably see, uh, it will be quite difficult to, to spot actually, but uh, if we came very close to, to one of those spheres, we could see that reflection of uh, the reflective object in the reflection uh, so, like a third degree reflection would be would be just black. I can't see it here because it's too small. Never mind. So, uh, basically, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, parameter um, uh, known as as uh, the bounces should be either one or two. Anything more than that will probably just uh, just uh, steal from your frame rate, and uh, without uh, any clear improvement of the uh, of the image. Enough of Unity. Uh, let's try to uh, give you quite kind of summary of uh, re reflection probes. Uh, so we have baked, uh, which can be one time baked. Uh, bake reflection is is cheap. Okay, um, uh, baking uh, reflection means that you create the cube map offline, and when uh, the game is started, uh, this reflection is not not recreated in any any way. Um, of course, this is a totally static um, reflection, so no animation, no changes in the environment would be visible in this kind of um, uh, reflection. Uh, the custom can be, uh, for example, is controlled by by a uh, by a um, script, and uh, real time is uh, what you have just seen. Uh, technically, uh, the reflection probe is a cube map, uh, so six uh, uh, shots of the environment are created up, down, left, right, front, back, and uh, uh, put together into, into what we know as a, a cube map. Uh, it can be, as mentioned before, static or uh, dynamic. It's also important to understand the probe zone. Uh, which can be different sides, that can be also different origins, so you can uh, uh, change the position from which these six screenshots are created. If you have a probe, uh, uh, reflection probe, that should support two um, neighboring objects, uh, you can choose the origin of the probe zone to be uh, midway between them, for example, which uh, can be quite a useful um, solution. Uh, if you have overlapping probe zones, which we had for a moment, then the resulting uh, resulting uh, reflection will be interpolation between two different reflections. Uh, another very powerful process of so-called blending reflections. Okay, so these blending reflections are. Uh, 
can, can create more variants of uh, reflected world reflections in the scenes so they can help you if you have multiple reflective objects but you want to limit the number of reflection probes used and uh, uh, the final thing is what we uh, mentioned interreflections so re uh, as it is called in unity reflection bounces uh, so whether you can see reflection in the reflection or reflection in the reflection of the reflection and so on uh, a few aspects of uh, performance and optimization of reflection probes so first of all resolution you don't really require a full uh, resolution for reflection uh, probes and uh, uh, this resolution is is here i was looking this uh, for, for this so by default it's uh, 128 you can decrease this resolution and this automatically changed the other image to uh, more blurred and you can increase this to get a really beautiful beautiful uh, reflection um, but is it so much better than 128 i don't really see a difference okay and uh, uh, two far 2048 it's 16 times 16 256 times larger textures uh, that will be combined into the cube map so 128 is a reasonable value but you can experiment uh, with with that uh, also the refresh mode whether it is every frame or on the wake only or via script uh, it will um, make a lot of difference and if you choose every frame then you can still uh, choose between uh, all faces at once or individual faces so uh, the full process would take six uh, uh, frames to complete uh, and so on so on so on so uh, think about performance and optimizations using your reflection probes custom shaders in unity uh, they come in several flavors so the first uh, um, type of shaders are surface shaders but we also have uh, more familiarly named vertex and fragment shaders which uh, don't differ that much from the shaders we used in this module uh, compute shaders and PBR graphs. PBR graphs is, uh, I would say, the most exciting option, uh, but uh, we will we'll concentrate on these two, okay, surface shaders and uh, PBR graphs. So what are surface shaders? Surface shaders are the most popular Unity type of a uh, coded shader, so a shader that you have to write in a, um, in code okay in a text editor you use visual studio for or uh, similar tool to create uh, surface shaders and uh, typically you will use cg as the programming language what is cg um, cg is a language intro introduced by uh, nvidia and even though it is not anymore continued by nvidia uh, it becomes quite popular because first of all it's a fantastic language okay it's not a OpenGL native language so we didn't use this uh, so far but uh, uh, good news uh, some good news is uh, CG is quite similar to GLSL so if you know how to program in GLSL using CG will not be a big uh, a big uh, challenge for you um, so you basically uh, create a script uh, the script is coded in CG and this script is a shader for you on this picture you can see uh, some cars shaded with a uh, surface shader called car paint or body car, car, car body but it was actually called car paint um this uh, this was uh, used to create one of the previous slides uh, you s you've seen in the presentation today uh, we had a, a blue car and a red car they were shaded with a surface shader called car paint shader 
So what are exactly surface shader, shaders? Uh, these are, this is a special type of shaders first introduced by Pixar. The Pixar from, from uh, you know, Toy Story, Finding Nemo. Okay, Pixar has, uh, have uh, introduced, discovered, no, invented and introduced uh, a surface shader uh, in Renderman, the uh, substantial 3D modeling tool. Um, you should only use surface shader if you need to model a surface that is to be affected by light. By light, sorry. Uh, you might ask what's the relationship between surface shaders and vertex shaders and uh, fragment shaders that you already know. Uh, well, uh, surface shader is a compact way to write complex shaders. Uh, this, uh, this shader will be automatically decoupled by Unity into several, in some cases, quite a, multi quite a large number of vertex and fragment shaders, because at the end of the day, uh, what the graphics card expects are the uh, vertex shaders and fragment shaders, and the surface shader is a kind of a higher level shader. Uh, with a lot of automatic support, for example, for forward and deferred lighting. Uh, basically, you write a couple of lines and a lot more is auto-generated from that uh, by uh, Unity. So, a uh, surface shader is in fact a combination of vertex and fragment shaders with a lot of s additional support for ma lighting, multiple passes and so on. Uh, they are written typically in CG, which is not the only available language in Unity, but by far most popular. Uh, quite likely Unity one day will switch to the GLSL as well, but for now, for now it's, uh, uh, you know, CG rules. How to create a shader in Unity? Uh, you need to create a new shader in the project tab. You have also to create a material. Then you need to attach the shader by uh, to, to the material. The easiest way of doing this is just to drag the shader and drop it on the material. And then you have to attach the material to your game object. I will not uh, discuss how to do it because it's quite um, obvious. Uh, shaders are edited in Visual Studio or your other favorite uh, uh, text or code editor, like any other scripts. And uh, here's an example. I will not use your precious type time to uh, discuss this uh, example of a shader called snow because it was used to uh, display to, to render a, a snow surface in one of my old examples with uh, snowman okay and uh, never mind uh, if you are interested in uh, surface shaders i will rather send you uh, maybe this will be easier send you back to canvas and if you scroll down after the lecture slides and uh, the main two videos that I uh, will be recommending you to watch, uh, and another one, one more, there are some materials, uh, lower in the f lowest section uh, entitled research is about why not try shaders the hard way. Scripting in CG is tougher than using the shader graphs. Shader graphs will be introduced in a moment. Uh, this section is entirely devoted to coding surface uh, shaders in CG. Um, this is based on my uh, material for a disused, disused material for a discontinued workshop session about uh, writing shaders and the result of this uh, workshop should be surprise, surprise, the car paint shader. Okay, so if you n want to learn how to create car paint shader, uh, download these materials, look into these uh, materials, you will find a recipe which instructs step by step how to create a shader like this. Uh, you will also find some additional material from Unity uh, manuals. And uh, one more uh, video which is quite interesting because it's seemingly, seemingly on a totally different topic, color selector like this one here plus dynamic material uh, material unity, okay? Uh, but uh, what's uh, quite interesting in this uh, video, uh, the guy is using surface shaders 
just to fill in these two colored areas in uh, the color uh, selector. So uh, what he uh, precisely does are two, or maybe just one, I don't remember, uh, surface shaders, okay, which are quite simple. And uh, this video shows a creation, uh, first of all, the full pipeline of creating a, a surface shader from the beginning to the end and in the context of a, a totally different application. So you may, may, may see it as a kind of an interesting application of um, shaders, of uh, surface shaders. And now, uh, a few minutes before the end of this recording, uh, the time is for the main topic for today, which is called PBR graphs or shader graphs. They are relatively new because they were introduced for the first time in Unity 2018 as an experimental feature, and uh, they are full, uh, fully, fully working for about two or three years, something like that. Uh, you need the uh, universal, oh sorry, that's still an old version here, no, no, not anything like lightweight RP anymore, it's now called the URP, Universal Rendering Pipeline, uh, because uh, the shader graphs are not available in regular 3D, uh, Unity 3D uh, projects. Uh, what I mean is exactly that uh, when you start uh, when you start uh, a new project in Unity, you have to choose uni Universal Render Pipeline or High Definition Render Pipeline, because in 3D projects uh, uh, these uh, these uh, uh, PBR graphs are not uh, available. And in a uh, typical face-to-face -face, uh, uh, session, this would be now a demo time. In this demo, I would show you these three sample shaders that are all three of them are produced visually with a shader graph, which looks like this uh, or like this. Okay, so uh, basically, um, shader graphs are a visual way of uh, creating shaders, of writing shaders, by choosing nodes from a broad range of, of possible tools and connecting these, uh, these nodes in the proper way. You also have a preview, but uh, actually this is nearly the end of this presentation because if you scroll up a bit again, uh, here you have two very important tutorials. So the first tutorial recorded by me last year is about, uh, uh, I think, two simple uh, shader graphs. Uh, please note that uh, in this video I'm still using the name LWRP or Lightweight uh, Rendering Pipeline. It's been now renamed as uh, URP Universal Rendering Pipeline, but besides this one small detail, everything else in this recording is, uh, is, uh, is all right. It's uh, perfectly up to date, so you can freely use uh, this, uh, these uh, uh, recordings. Um, so the first one is about uh, two um, relatively simple, uh, simple uh, effects. Uh, which you can see here in the static form, but uh, uh, this uh, recording will show everything about it basically and will uh, teach you how to uh, create uh, uh, shader graphs in Unity. And uh, there is one more uh, tutorial that I, uh, I recommend. I will uh, recommend uh, a lot. A wonder okay. so, sorry. Oh, yeah. moment, let's go a little bit. So this is something I'm sure you recognize. This is water rendering uh, from our uh, OpenGL classes, all right? And this tutorial is uh, quite uh, quite funny because it uses, as you can see here, it uses um, our um, regular OpenGL recipe and uh, 
I'm interpreting this recipe and producing a shader graph from GLSL. So uh, the objective of this presentation is to show you how you can produce a shader graph for a technique you know, you know, if you know how to create a GLSL shaders, uh, vertex shader and fragment shader, how to translate this knowledge into a shader graph in Unity. And one more material that I would like to uh, really warmly recommend is uh, prepared by my current final year student, uh, Ivan Baird, and it is based on this excellent uh, final uh, project that we, he will be uh, finishing quite quite soon. Uh, rather than uh, shader graphs, uh, he is using coder, coded shaders in CG, as demonstrated before. Okay, uh, but they were they are absolutely amazing, and uh, the effects uh, he gets are um, are fantastic. Okay, so another video that I warmly recommend. Um, maybe you will not learn too much about how to create a similar scenery, but you can find out from this video what is possible using shaders with Unity. And uh, this would be uh, everything I had uh, prepared for, for this session uh, today, but uh, don't stop on this. Uh, watch uh, the recordings I recommended in in Canvas, and uh, enjoy because I think that uh, uh, graphs, shader graphs, are one of the most exciting and definitely one of the most uh, most uh, powerful techniques that Unity has on offer. And uh, with this, I thank you very much for uh, watching and uh, now go to Canvas and uh, explore the material available above. Thank you very much and goodbye.